When you first get to meet a member of the royal family or the, the queen, you're advised by royal courtiers to say ma'am as in jam, mm. but uh, today it's ma'am as in marmalade. <laughs> and um, the, uh, the queen uh, had this wonderful, wonderful little uh, com comic moment with Paddington Bear, two great British icons uniting, and we finally got to discover what's in the Queen's handbag. Mm. For generations we've wondered about this, now we know it's marmalade sandwiches. Uh, and uh, and uh, it was a wonderful way to set off, in a very British cheeky way, to set off the Platinum Jubilee celebration, including the Queen and Paddington Bear tapping in Queen's We Will Rock You on their teacups before they began to play. There was something just a little bit special about that, wasn't there? Because we get to see a lighter side of the Queen, which we don't often see in public. I mean, clearly there was huge response to the, to the James Bond uh, e episode, uh, you know, for the, for the Olympics, and, you know, which went in incredibly well. I like the fact that it was uh, uh, James Bond that time around, and Michael Bond is the, <laughs> is the author yeah. of the Paddington books. So a, a little bit of continuity there. Yeah, whoever came up with it, I think it's a, it's a, a small work of genius. You know, Paddington is, is a strangely traditional figure, given that he comes from uh, uh, darkest, deepest Peru. Uh, but he's, there's something quintessentially, I suppose, English about Paddington Bear in, yeah. his, in his attitudes and the, and the inherent comedy in it. But, yeah, lovely, lovely moment, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. Um, looking at um, the, the, the event itself last night, Ray, I mean, the Sunday Mirror's got a lot of this. I mean, it, a lot of rock and roll, which you sort of can't imagine where he's particularly the Queen's cup of tea. But she is, she's catering for the, the wider audience there, isn't, there, isn't she? Yes, it, it, it's more a party for the people rather than a platinum party for the Queen. Uh, um, you know, the Queen's favourite singer was George Formby, which I'm a, I'm a huge fan of, but I'm not quite sure when I'm cleaning windows would electrify the crowd in quite the same way <laughs> as some of our more, the more recent performances that we saw. Uh, including, you know, uh, Andrew Lloyd Webber doing musicals as well. It was, a, it was quite a smorgasbord. With, with Jason Donovan. Jason Donovan, you know, who I remember fondly from Neighbours' time in his uh, amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. Andrea Bocelli brought a tear to Camilla's eye when he sang Ness and Dorma. There was something for everyone in that, I think. And, of course, the great stalwarts, which everyone always relies on for Jubilees, Elton John, uh, Rod Stewart, uh, wonderful. Yeah, yeah. I mean, are you a, are you a man of music, Neil? I, I, I just enjoyed the fact, I think after the two years that the, that the nation has had, I think anything where you see a gathering of, of the multitude in that way, you know, all of the images of, of the sheer volume of people that had come together, you know, which completely casts aside notions uh, uh, of there being any kind of lack of patriotism in the country. I mean, the, the whole thing just underlined that when you get down to the grassroots and you get down to the people, there is a, a natural genuine, heartfelt love of country, love of tradition, love of pageantry, love of heritage. Uh, and I think whatever event had been thrown last night, and whoever were, whichever uh, individuals were there on the stage, I think it was really about the people. I think it was really a celebration, a spontaneous coming together of the people, which was so much needed mm -hmm. after two years of, of all the atomised separation, not being to get together. And you, can um, you can really see that in terms of the number of street parties far exceed those of 10 years ago, mm. far exceed those of the Golden Jubilee. We're on the level sort of of the Silver Jubilee of 1977. And Britain has transformed so dramatically. Nobody would have imagined now that there would be 100,000 street parties. We don't know how many of them are going to take place now, but at least as of yesterday, 100,000 street parties taking place in some form across the country. I think, it's, I think that aspect is something that the, the, the present politicians on, on, of all stripes have a deaf ear for it. They've got a tin ear for the, for the natural enthusiasms of the vast majority of the population. And I think the natural enthusiasm that was, that was brought out by and was, you know, was, uh, you know, with the Jubilee being its focal point, it underlines that, in, that love of country that I think the, the political parties have just I was, I mean, been I was, deaf to. I was, I was going to say, what, what do you make of it all, Neil? Because, I mean, you're a man who I fondly remember watching, sort of walking around the coast of, of Britain a few years ago. I fondly remember that. <laughs> but, you know, you, so you've got to, through that line of work, if nothing else, you've got to meet all different sorts of people and different communities and, and different views on the UK. And this is something which I think has brings people together, but does, does stretch from, from tail to top. Yes, the, one, of the, one of the many uh, aspects of Britain that I grew to love by, by, through, that, through that project 
was the variety. You know, it's a it's a, a an island of tribes, but there are many different types of peoples. You know, who who are brought together as one. Many accents, many ways of life. It's it's such a you know a rich tapestry. But at times and when required, the place comes together as one, and there are unifying characteristics in the country. And given the opportunity to come together for something like the Jubilee, then you, you see the, the you know the inherent union of the people. And I think it, it can be you know I think some people like to sneer at it and to look down at it, but it's a big mistake to do that because it's innate, inherent, and given the opportunity the people come together to, to mark these events. But is, is that why the royal family is important? Because, although they technically don't hold any power now, and you know, there's all the, the, always calls by the Republicans and what have you to, to try and move on, but it does give us that one unifying point, does it, that perhaps we would lose without them? And, and I think, though, perhaps uniquely really now in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the personality, the character of the Queen herself, I mean, that, that irreplaceable continuity of, of someone whose reign spans 70 years, you know, from Churchill and through all of the, the here-today, gone-tomorrow politicians that are, the, that are the stepping stones, she has always been there. And that kind of continuity that you have from a, a monarch is, is not to be rivaled by, by that of a, a president or, or whoever has a, you know, has a couple of terms and then is replaced by someone else. Uh, and as you know, David Starkey on this channel and others have pointed out that uh, the, the countries that have been most stable and most resilient have, have been those that, are, that have constitutional monarchies of the sort that we have. And our constitutional monarchy at the moment, under the Queen, that reign of 70 years, stands supreme. Welcome to the GB News YouTube channel. You can watch us live 24 hours a day, catch up on your favourite shows and join in the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content.